Aliona, how old are you? Uh, I'm 21. And how old is your cousin? Uh, 24. Okay. When did you leave Ukraine? Uh, so we leave uh, around like five days ago. Uh, yeah. And what was the journey to get here? So first of all, we arrived to Romania. Uh, we get to Bucharest. From Bucharest, we uh, had a plane on to Madrid. From Madrid to Mexico City, and from Mexico City right here to Tijuana. Why did you leave? I mean, the war has been going on for a few weeks, so yeah. or more than a month. Yeah. Why did you leave five days ago? So, uh, first of all, our parents are worried about our safety and uh, we have got the proposition from our friend that he has an opportunity uh, to give us this opportunity to leave the country to America and we were like, yes, we uh, really appreciate it. Where you're from in Ukraine, what's it like there? What are the conditions? Uh, so in our city, thanks God, it's calm, but um, almost every day we have got, uh, you know, the sirens, uh, sirens, uh, it's like uh, um, the sound that is uh, telling us that the danger is coming. So it's really scary, but thanks God in our city it's calm. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of people from other cities that they are running from uh, bombs. Uh, yeah, but in other cities, it's really horrible situation. Uh, a lot of people are dying. A lot of ch childrens, uh, women's and men's, and that's really horrible to see. To see that your country <laughs> been dying day by day. Uh, a lot of beautiful cities being destroyed and that's really horrible to see. Why didn't the rest of your family come with you? So um, um, my father and her father, um, there is a rule that uh, men before 60 cannot leave the country. So my father is 48 and uh, her father is uh, 58. So they cannot leave the country because government can say, uh, like, they can ask them to help the country in any minute. So that's why. And your moms are there as well, your dads and your moms and your grandma? Uh, yeah. Uh, our grandma is uh, living with her family. Uh, they are taking care of her, her mother, and uh, father um, yeah so this is why and my uh, our grandma cannot walk uh, she's like disabled you know and so this is why they have to stay and even if there was the opportunity to take her she cannot physically to make this uh, trip you know and my mom uh, staying in Istanbul Turkey with my sister uh, my sister uh, left Ukraine uh, a few years ago, around five years ago. Uh, she's studying there, she's working, and uh, my mom c came there like, to be with her. And you have a brother? Yeah. Your cousin? My cousin. He's uh, his a soldier. Name, yeah, he's a soldier. His name is Matvi. Uh, he is uh, 23 years old. Yeah, 23 years old. Uh, he was in the military, um, so right now in this situation um, of the war, he has to protect our country. Um, You're worried about him? Yeah, a lot. Uh, I got the goosebumps every time I'm telling people about him because Knowing that someone from your family is there in hotspots of Ukraine, it's horrible, really horrible. 
You have a picture of your brother? Yes. Yeah. Can show. 23? Yes. Does it worry you when you see that picture? First time she showed me, I started crying. <laughs> I cannot. Have you ever been to the United States, either of you? No, never. Are you scared? Um, yes, but we're excited also to see new people, to see America. I mean, almost every person in Ukraine is like dreaming to get to America, like to see other people, this culture, those streets. Because uh, in Ukraine, people are interested in uh, music, American music, uh, culture, movies a lot. So this is why uh, uh, people in Ukraine are so ex excited to get there and to see those in life, in person, you know. Since you've been here in Mexico, you mentioned you had to stay in a stadium and now at this camp. What's your experience been like in Mexico? Uh, also, we've never been in Mexico before. This is our first time. Uh, we're really thankful for the volunteers there and here that giving us food, a shelter, uh, anything we need. Uh, this is so organized. I mean, really, really appreciated this help. Uh, it means a lot because without without them, I don't know what, what we will be doing here. You had to stay in a stadium? Yes, around uh, three days. Yeah, we spent around three days there. And how long have you been here? One night already. What have the... You're well fed. I know it's very organized, but what are the conditions like at night when you go to sleep? At night, uh, we are sleeping in this uh, uh, like basketball playground it's like a building um, we are sleeping in the floor uh, I mean we have a blanket uh, we have got I mean everything that we need of course it's not a bed in your house or something I mean but it's better than nothing do you see yourself going back to Ukraine anytime soon we hope we hope so because, I mean, our families are there. Uh, being separated from there, it really breaks our heart. And knowing that they're still there and we are not with them, it's sad. How have you been communicating with your families? Uh, we're chatting with them. Uh, we have got uh, sometimes we have here Wi-Fi and uh, SIM card, you know, uh, for the telephone. Uh, it's a Mexican, I guess, uh, SIM card. So we have got the internet. We just sending them uh, uh, messages that we are okay, no worries. Uh, people are taking care of us. Uh, we eat, we sleep, we're waiting. Sometimes we get call or sending some videos to see how it's going on here uh, and just trying to let them know that everything is fine with us. Even if it's not, we're trying to say that it's okay, no worries, everything will be fine, you know. It's interesting as we sit here, there's bubbles and <laughs> yeah. there's kids a laughing. Of, a lot of kids. They don't, they're not able to comprehend the situation. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost a breath of fresh air yeah. to hear their laughter, to see the bubbles. Yes, exactly. It makes things a bit better, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're making the situation more better. Not, uh, you know, if we, like, sitting and thinking about things, uh, we're just like going deep in our thoughts. But kids, they a bit of happiness in our life, even exactly in this time. So when you 
get through here, your plan is to go to Sacramento? Yeah, exactly. And then what, just day by day? <sighs> well, we will try our best uh, to stay there, to find the job, um, maybe to create a new life. And in the future, maybe we will take our families there if we will be like strong, if we will get uh, opportunity for this. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> what was your life back in Ukraine like before this all started? What do you mean? Before the war, what was your normal life like? Normal life? Um, my cousin is working, uh, she's making nails for girls in uh, women's salon and um, I'm studying in university uh, for the faculty of uh, physical culture, uh, like a coach. Um, so we were just spending time, you know. It was, <laughs> it was great before one day. I just, I'm just trying to understand, you know, um, how it wasn't so long ago that you never, you never envisioned any of this. And now you've gone through a war, you've gone through extensive travel, and now you're here in Mexico. It's just incredible how much your lives have changed in such a short period of time. Um, it was very stressful. Um, stressful for our brain, for our bodies. Uh, our body was reacting to this uh, in difficult ways and different ways. But we understand that the life is going on. We have to go through this as best as it possible. Um, yeah. You have no choice. What we can do, I mean.